Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to use the mesh current method to solve this problem on the board which simply stated is basically what is the power supplied by the 100 volt source. So we have a 100 volt source, we have a resistor network very similar to other problems we've done in the past and we're again building our complexity up in, in, in the terms of our problems so we need to figure out how do we use mesh currents to solve this thing. Well, the first thing we want to basically do in the end game is we want to figure out if we're trying to find the power supplied by the source, we need to know the current flowing through that source. And then we can do I times V and that gives us the power. So we're going to use mesh currents. The first thing we need to do is identify where are our meshes. Well, if you think of this as guy as a cookie cutter, then a mesh will be here, a mesh will be this whole rectangular region at the top, and then a mesh would be this whole rectangular region over on the side like that. So we need to label these guys. Uh, and it's up to you how exactly how you label them, but I always go clockwise, so I, I literally go in my circuit and I label it like this, I sub A, and then I go to, it doesn't matter if I go here or here, it really doesn't matter, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to draw something like this and I'm going to call it I sub B, and then I'm going to go over here, I sub C. When you force yourself to draw the mesh current directions, it helps you visual, in my opinion, it helps you visualize what you're doing as you go around the circuit. Like when I get to this leg, I'm going to have to subtract two currents and it helps me visualize what direction the mesh currents are going. So don't skip that step. Don't just say, oh, this is mesh A, B, and C. Let me just write my equations. I would always write, draw the circle A, B, C. Or if you want to label this I, B, and I, C, that's fine too. Doesn't really matter. So let's go and deal with mesh A. So I'm going to put a little A here. I'm writing the equa equation for mesh A. So let's start at this corner, go through the 100 volt source, through the 5 ohm resistor, through the 40 ohm resistor, and then back, and then we'll be done. So we're doing summing voltages, right? Anytime you have a voltage rise from negative to positive, you have to treat it as a negative in your equation, because this is basically a Kirchhoff voltage law. So we do negative 100. Now, when we get up to the 5 ohm resistor, we're going through it this direction. Uh, a rule of thumb is you basically always pretend that the uh, real current flowing through it is in the direction that you're traveling, basically. So that it produces a voltage drop from plus to minus, so that I can treat it as a positive sign in my equation writing. So, if I assume there's a voltage drop from plus to minus, then that means there really is a current going this way. But notice I've board I'm bordering two meshes. IA is actually going this direction. IB is actually going in the opposite direction. So the way I handle that is I say IA minus IB. That's the current flowing in the 5 ohm resistor in this direction. Then I multiply by 5. This expression is the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor in the direction assuming that it was plus to minus. That means I have current flowing this direction and I'm, of course I'm walking around in the same direction. IA minus IB gives us that implied direction. Alright, so we're done with that. That's the voltage drop. Now, we go over here and we're going to, when we get through to the 40 ohm resistor, we're going to again assume that the net current flowing through this resistor is actually going down. So that when I walk through it in that same direction, I can put a plus sign in my equation. So if I'm assuming the net current's going down, if IA is circulating in a down manner and IC is circulating opposite, then it's going to be IA minus IC. All right, now that we have the subtraction here, that is the current flowing down through the 40 ohm resistor. We have to obviously multiply by 40 because it's I times R. That's going to give us that voltage drop, and we set it equal to zero. So again, just take stock of what we're doing.